The Disney dining plan is back. And we're gonna beat it. <sighs> hey there, ma'am fam. The Disney dining plan is back for the first time since 2020. So we have the Disney dining plan today and we are gonna be doing our best to beat it, AKA getting our money's worth and beyond. So we'll be eating a lot of food today and along the way we will share the best ways to use the Disney dining plan, how to break down the dining plan, and if it's worth it for your family, which spoiler alert, all comes down to math. Are you ready? Food and math? That's my dream. <laughs> Before we get started, it's important to answer, what is the Disney dining plan? The Disney Dining Plan is a way to prepay for your meals and snacks around Walt Disney World and it is available only to Walt Disney World Resort guests. There are two different kinds of Disney Dining Plan, the Quick Service Dining Plan and the Standard Disney Dining Plan. The Quick Service Plan includes two quick service meals and one snack per person per night of your stay. The Standard Disney Dining Plan includes one quick service meal, one table service meal, and one snack per person per night of your stay. And both of the Disney Dining Plans include one resort refillable mug per person. They're back. Yeah. Now the important info, the cost. Yes. For the quick service dining plan, it is $57.01 for adults age 10 and older and $23.83 for kids age three to nine each night of your Disney World stay. For the standard Disney dining plan, it is $94.28 for adults age 10 and older and $29.69 for kids age three to nine, again, for each night of your stay. A couple of important things. You have to get it for your entire stay and for every member of your party in your room. You cannot pick and choose, only do a couple nights or one person on the dining plan. It's also important to note that kids age three to nine must order off the kids menu when redeeming their table service and quick service entitlements. Kids two and under do not get a Disney dining plan. It is assumed they will share with other people or you'll provide food for them. And lastly, it's important to note that tax is included with those prices, but gratuity is not. So when you're at your table service restaurants, you still need to tip your cast members. Please tip your cast members. Please tip your cast members. We will dive into what is included when we get to each of those table and quick service locations. But first, let's talk about these little beauties. Now these mugs include any sort of standard beverage, so that's sodas, teas, and coffees, and you have unlimited refills during your stay. I used to have so many of these. Got so many. I love a refillable resort mug. Now, a refillable resort mug is $21.99 plus tax if you were to purchase it out of pocket at your Disney World Resort, which means considering sodas are around $4.50, coffee's around $3.80, you need to refill it what? Seven times. Seven times. Seven and a half. To get your money's worth if you're buying it out of pocket, but it's part of the dining plan. So as we go throughout the day today, again, we're trying to beat the dining plan. We are gonna total up everything we spent. So with tax, these two beautiful resort mugs, don't look at Goofy when I say that. Yeah, don't do that. Would have cost us $46.62 out of pocket with tax. And I think we should refill them one more time before we go. Uh huh? But the most important thing you need to know about these mugs, these are useless at Walt Disney World yeah. parks. Only good at resorts. They are only good to refill at your resort. So keep that in mind. I see people all the time put their coffee in it, bring it to the park all excited to fill it up at Pecos Bills. You cannot fill this up at Pecos Bills. So just keep that in mind. Uh, what are you doing? Stretching. I wore leggings. Uh huh. I'm wearing a Mickey pretzel earring. Okay. I'm ready. You suit it up. Suit it up. Are you ready to beat the dining plan? By my calculations, we need to spend more than $188.56 today to beat the dining plan. I think we can do it. I'm so ready. We have arrived at Disney's Hollywood Studios for our first quick service meal of the day. Quick service meals include one entree and its accompanying side and a beverage. Now, if you are a part of the adult dining plan, that beverage can be a specialty beverage, which includes slushies and milkshakes and the like. And if you are of age, so 21 years or older, it can be an alcoholic beverage. Mobile ordering our first meal from Pizza Rizzo. What? I'm just kidding. Not only would I never choose to eat there on purpose, it's a bad credit on the dining plan. We'll get into that later. We're ordering from Docky Bay 7. First things first though, I'm gonna show you how to check how many snacks, meal entitlements you have left. So you're gonna go to Resort Hotel. This is one way to do it, there's multiple ways. It's gonna load your reservation and you're gonna click check dining plan and it will come up with all of your entitlements. As a note, you're receiving a bank of snacks, quick service and table service meals. You do not have to use them 
in a certain order on a certain day. It's just decided by how many nights your hotel package is. So if you book four nights, each person's gonna get four snacks, four quick service meals, and four table service meals on the standard dining plan. Use them how you will. They expire midnight on your checkout day, but if you wanna eat two table service meals in one day and no quick service meals, you can bank the quick service meals, et cetera, et cetera. So we have picked up our refillable drink mugs, as you can see. We have two quick service adult meals left, two snacks left, and two table service adult meals left. Now to mobile order from Docking Bay 7. Note, we are gonna split one meal right now and do another quick service meal at another location later, which you are able to do. It actually makes your dining plan go a little bit further because the portions are huge. So, Docking Bay 7 has a lot of great items, but the key to success with the dining plan, to beat the dining plan, we need to be expensive. Treat yourself, you're worth it. And those expensive things on the menu are over $18. The most expensive thing is this Batuan beef and crispy tapato stir fry. Uh, we are gonna swap for macaroni and cheese as opposed to yucca, sorry, yucca, but mac and cheese is better. We also, again, get a beverage, and because we're adults, that beverage can be alcohol. Alcohol is expensive and thus a good use of dining plan. The most expensive thing is a drink that's $17, but it sounds very sweet and not oh, like my. anything either of us want to drink. We both like beer, so we're gonna get a $14 beer and add that. And we're gonna view my order. It's gonna apply your dining plan meals and snacks. The app is gonna default to using the dining plan. Keep that in mind for what we're gonna talk about next. And we are going to review it and purchase it. Now, an important tip, important best practice when using the dining plan and mobile ordering is make sure that everything you want to be using the dining plan for is being used and anything you don't wanna be using the dining plan for is not being used. Here's a good example of that. Let's say I'm going to Casey's Corner and it's an alternate universe because I'm gonna get this $15 hot dog oh. because that's expensive and being expensive is important on the dining plan. It says, hey, do you wanna add some cheese sauce? You bet I wanna add cheese sauce. So I'm gonna add my hot dog with cheese sauce and then again, I get a drink. So I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna go, oh, hey, a mint julep lemonade. That sounds like a good use of a drink because that's a specialty beverage. Now, if I go to view my order, it's applying my meals and snacks. And you'll notice it's counting the hot dog as the meal. The drink is included with the meal, but it's trying to make the cheese sauce my snack. The cheese sauce is a dollar and thus a horrible use of a dining plan snack. So therefore, when you're checking out, you need to make sure that anything you do not want to be using as a snack is not being used as a snack. So you need to click modify order, change dining plan options on the cheese sauce, and use, I don't want to use my dining plan for this item, click that and save. So always make sure when you're checking out that whatever you want to be your meal is your meal. Anything you wanna pay for out of pocket because it's a better dollar value, you're paying for out of pocket. That's pro tip number one. Now let's go to space. We have made it to Docking Bay 7. Docking Bay 7 is the main quick service restaurant here in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And the reason that it is a good quick service option for your dining plan is it has one of the higher average costs per meal at $16.14. Which puts it at a much higher dollar value than other standard quick service restaurants that serve things like puffy pizza or burgers. Love Docking Bay 7 as a Star Wars fan. It is themed to be a docking bay when ships come to port from space. And a couple of cool Easter eggs that you can see, just a few. If you look here, this main crate has the number 80 as well as 77 above it and the top crate being 83. Now those are a reference to the release years of the first Star Wars trilogy. So 1977, 1980, and 1983. And over here, if you look closely, you'll see a creature frozen in carbonite, which also happens to our favorite scoundrel in the films, Han Solo. Here is our meal from Docking Bay 7. It is the Batuan beef and crispy tapato stir fry, except for it's half of that. It's a smoky braised beef glazed in a tamarind sauce, and it's normally served with stir fried mushrooms and vegetables, including yucca, pickled onions, and cilantro. However, the app gave me the choice to modify it, so we swapped the side to be the house made macaroni and cheese with roasted vegetables vegetables, which as you can clearly see is broccoli. For our beverage, we are enjoying the Gold Squadron Lager from Blue Point Brewing Company. It is a golden lager with lavender and plum flavors, and what's great about it is it's brewed specifically for Galaxy's Edge, which is a cool add-on that you can get one of the specialty beers as part of the dining plan. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow, 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 wow. First of all, that's very tender. If you're unfamiliar with the flavor profile of a tamarind, it's almost like a citrusy apricot. Um, and you can actually taste that on the glaze itself. It's like a pretty darn good mac and cheese, too. It's like an elevated craft style mac. I, yeah, I really, really enjoy this. It, this actually surprised me. I wasn't expecting the beef to be this tender. I really enjoy this, yeah. I'm also quite enjoying it. Now, normally my default in Galaxy's Edge would be to go for a Ronto wrap, which isn't quite as expensive, or I like the tip yip, which is the chicken, but on the dining plan, it's in your best interest to love beef. <laughs> beef is often the most expensive thing, and this one's a good surprise. Cheers. That is a good beer. It's a very simple, classic beer. You can taste the kind of floral notes from the lavender and the fruitiness from the plum, but mostly it just tastes like an elevated, like Stella, I would liken it to. Not my favorite custom beer at Disney World. That would be over in Pandora. I like the Hawks Grog Ale that you could get at Satuli Canteen, but it's a delicious beer and it's included with what we paid for. Made it to our next destination, Disney's Animal Kingdom for feedings two and three. We are gonna grab our snack credits here. Disney would describe it as a single serve item and they give examples such as a single serve of popcorn, an ice cream cone, a bottled soda or water, a Mickey premium bar. And while those are all considered snacks, they're not necessarily good uses of snacks because again, to maximize the dining plan, you wanna make sure you're getting things that are a little heartier and more expensive and there's some great choices here in Animal Kingdom to do that. Note, alcoholic beverages cannot be used as snacks on the dining plan and neither can collectibles such as souvenir sippers, popcorn buckets, etc. And as a bit of a behind the scenes true story, we were planning on going to Eight Spoon Cafe to pick up the pulled pork mac and cheese, but that is no longer offered as a snack. So instead, we are headed to Mr. Kamal's to pick up the chicken dumplings. Now keep in mind, we could have gotten the standard baked mac and cheese from Eight Spoon Cafe, but that was under $5, and this is a numbers game, and ideally we wanted to pick up a snack that was at the $6.50 price point or above. Here's a quick update for you, because we are learning as we go, as the reintroduction of the Disney Dining Plan is so fresh and new, we can't use the snack option for Mr. Kamal's fries or dumplings either. We, we had that as a good backup plan. And now we need a backup to the backup plan. It's time for plan C, folks. <laughs> Headed to our third snack location. We actually had this one on our list as one of our original desired snacks. Gonna go make sure it qualifies. Now, we could get a Mickey pretzel, which is $7.79 before tax. We did confirm that would count on the dining plan, and that's a good use of a snack. But, to be honest, I don't love Mickey pretzels, and was hoping to pick something a little bit more unique, especially since we're in my favorite park and I love the food here. Great news, the Dino Bite snack menu is accurate and the customer said anything we wanted counted as a snack as long as it had the icon. The most expensive items were this, which is the very cute dinosaur themed ice cream sandwich. They also had an ice cream sundae that counted. This with tax was $8.83. Remember, tax is not included when you're making your purchase. These hand scooped ice cream sandwiches are one of my favorite snacks in Disney World. I like, I actually like the regular one better that you can, uh, that's chocolate chip cookies and I always get strawberry ice cream, but this is a money game. These sugar cookies? <laughs> These sugar cookies remind me of the cookies they used to have at McDonald's in the kids meals because there's some lemon flavoring to them. But it's sugar cookies, vanilla ice cream, rolled in some cookie crumbs, very cute, very simple and delicious. Obviously huge and shareable. Great use of a snack credit for these cookie sandwiches. A couple more notes about snacks on the Disney Dining Plan. You can tell what is a snack by looking at the menu and seeing that little Disney Dining Plan icon next to the menu item. However, it does not look like all the menus have been updated at the individual locations yet. So be sure to ask the cast members if the item you're looking for qualifies as a snack. But in the application for mobile order, it has been updated so you can use that as a guide as well where applicable. Additionally, while in the past you were able to swap out any unused quick service meal credits for three snacks at food courts, that is no longer something you can do under the new dining plan. Oh, uh, 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 Rafiki. Oh my God, Rafiki. So we asked around and we're looking for a specialty pretzel like the cream cheese stuffed pretzel or the jalapeno cheese stuffed pretzel, but unfortunately they are no longer sold at Animal Kingdom. So we went with the classic Mickey pretzel, both for the sake of time and budget. This clocked in at $8.30 after tax. 
It also came with the cheese sauce. Thank you, Vanna, for the quotes. How unique. My favorite part is how it doesn't move much. Let's just... The smell came back for a second round. Let's just tear off an ear here. Let's taste without the cheese first. We'll get some cheese in a second. Well, that's a Mickey pretzel. Nothing to write home about. Has that sort of classic soft pretzel taste. This one, a little more dense than I'm used to it with pretzels, but I guess that's just to hold the shape of Mickey. And now the cheese. Cheers. You know, next time, I think I'll let them keep their cheese-flavored pasteurized cheese snack. But, in all seriousness, Mickey pretzels are a good, albeit basic, savory snack that you can get on the Disney dining plan, especially when a lot of your other options are going to be sweet snacks. And it also helps the, the cheese product. It wants you. It calls to you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> It's also really expensive, which ideally the snacks you choose are going to be in that $6 to $6.50 range after tax. Some other good snack choices that we have confirmed will qualify as snacks include Dole Whip floats, ice cream sundaes, blue and green milk over in Galaxy's Edge. There are several items in bakery cases, including Caramel Kuche, which I can't pronounce, the caramel shop in Germany. If you can get higher end items in there, such as some of the apples or the sandwich cookies, those are a great choice. A great, great use of a snack can be Starbucks. We confirmed with the cast members there that you can get pretty much any drink at Starbucks any size. So if you're someone who likes like a Frappuccino or adding a bunch of extra shots into your Starbucks, you can get a really good and expensive coffee. My coffee is only $5, which makes it not a great snack, but Starbucks could be a really good use of a snack. I used to always recommend festival food as well over at Epcot because almost all of the food items counted as snacks. However, there is not a festival while we're filming this. Festival of the Arts hasn't actually started. Stay tuned for that video coming soon. Uh, so we aren't able to go confirm if they've made any edits there, but we will make sure to keep an eye out and drop that into our Festival of the Arts video. Bad choices for your snack credits include chips, single serve fruit, bottled soda or bottled water, single serve popcorns, dipping sauces like we saw at Casey's before. Basically anything under $5 especially is a bad use of a snack credit. Okay, two snacks at Animal Kingdom acquired. It was a little bit more difficult than we had first anticipated though. Yeah, it was a little bit frustrating because despite all of our research and planning for what would be good uses of snacks, turns out several of the things that used to be snack credits no longer are, and we even saw some signs that were still labeled as having snacks, but they no longer counted, which again makes it a little bit harder to plan out. And I personally am bummed about this because I liked using my snacks on savory things, such as the pulled pork mac and cheese, which also could have been a light lunch on a certain day. Um, so I feel like they took away a lot of savory things and now mostly snacks are sweet. And I think for me, what's a little bit upsetting is that there are guidelines for what a snack should be, but it feels like at certain locations, the selections of what a snack is are pretty arbitrary and kind of subjective in some cases. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me that french fries at some quick service locations could be a snack, but not at others like Mr. Kamal's. So makes planning a little bit harder. That said, it is day two of the Disney Dining Plan being re-released. So I'm sure there's going to be a bit of a learning curve, but right now it is a little bit more difficult when you're planning to beat the dining plan like we are. And final note before we head to Disney Springs for our next meal. Remember, it's not the cast member's fault no. that are working at these locations. So even if you're frustrated or you're bummed that your favorite item is no longer a snack, please, as always, be nice to the cast members. Please they didn't nice make the rules. Yeah, they didn't make those rules. We have made it to our third stop for our fourth feeding. It is our second quick service meal and we are headed to the Polite Pig. The Polite Pig is a barbecue joint that is owned by local legends and James Beard Award nominees, James and Julie Petrakis. And it is, by my calculations, the best spot to pick up a quick service meal because the average price of entrees, entrees alone, 
is $19. That's not even including a drink yet. And also, it's delicious. For the dining plan, you can pick any of these entrees here, including the $26 cedar plank salmon or ribs, as well as any of the market sides, and for your beverage, if you would like to indulge, any of the cocktails listed here below. Our meal has arrived. Look at this. This is considered a quick service meal, and it totaled in over $40, which I believe is pretty good, huh, Dr. Strange? Oh, absolutely. We went for the rib platter, which automatically comes with some of their cornbread and coleslaw. Then again, you get to pick a side. We went for the whiskey caramel Brussels sprouts, which are fantastic. For our beverage, now I want to know, we asked if we could get the seasonal um, Manhattan, which was more expensive than the other cocktails. They told us we were not allowed to pick that. However, we could pick any of their draft cocktails. So we went for the sweet tea old fashioned. Also, big props to Polite Pig for having a sauce bar. So we picked up a bunch of barbecue sauces to enjoy this with. But honestly, look how big this portion is. That's a huge amount of food for the same cost as Pizza Rizzo Pizza. Hey, Alan. What's up? Big butt. Start with the Brussels sprouts, huh? I love Brussels sprouts, and these are some of the best. Oh my gosh, these, are just, these ribs are literally falling. Like, I, that's barely any effort. You booped it. These Brussels sprouts are so good. They're a slight sweetness to the because of the caramel sauce. Crispity, perfect every time. If you think you don't like Brussels sprouts, try these. No, no, keep going. I want to eat more. Whoa. These are falling off the bone. Incredible, incredible smoky flavor. The bark on the exterior is thick but filled with flavor. The meat itself is so incredibly savory but still really delectable. That hot sauce on it, the hot barbecue, is amazing. I'm trying to deduce now what it's rubbed with and then how it's treated throughout, but sweet, a little bit of molasses flavor, some brown sugar, not super sweet. It is phenomenal. This is my first time having the ribs here at Polite Pig. It will not be my last. Wow. And I'm normally like ribs in terms of barbecue aren't my go-to barbecue, but these are... I normally go for the coffee rub brisket, which is, I think, $22, so still a really good buy on the dining plan, but we're playing for keeps here, so we went for the more expensive dish. I do want to know one thing that's unique about the Play Pig is it's kind of a hybrid quick service, full service, so you're going to order at a register, but then you're going to sit down, and there are servers walking around if you want another drink, if you need a refill, if you need anything. So because of that, they ask you if you want a tip when you're checking out, which, again, tip is not included on the dining plan. They charged it back to our room because uh, we tipped extra. So we're just counting, for the purposes of the math, the amount of the, of the food and this drink. Ooh. That is scrumdiddlyumptious. When the cast member let us know that the uh, Manhattan was not included with the dining plan, we asked what a good non-sweet drink would be, and she suggested the sweet tea old-fashioned, which I was worried because it says sweet the name would be too sweet, but she let us sample it. You can sample the draft cocktails if you need to, and it's not sweet at all. It's a really good old-fashioned. They have a bourbon bar here, high-quality bourbon, slight sweetness because of the tea, but not overpowering at all. A really good cocktail, and I'm tickled that that's on the dining plan. It's akin to like an Arnold Palmer. Mm -hmm. But boozy. Yeah. Speaking of cocktail, it is in your best interest on the adult dining plan to buy at least a specialty drink, but certainly go for a cocktail if you do choose to imbibe. Because that is going to be the easiest way to beat the dining plan. Also note though, a weird caveat, only 10 and older adult dining plan members get the specialty beverage. If you've got someone three to nine, they're getting whatever drink is included with the kid's meal. So, there could be a scenario where if you've got an eight-year-old and an 11-year-old, the 11-year-old can pick a smoothie or a milkshake, the eight-year-old has to get whatever's included with their meal. So just know that going in, that there's gonna be a difference in how your three to nine-year-olds are treated and how your 10 and ups are treated. Because on the flip side of that, there's often a dessert element to a kid's meal that won't be included with quick service adult meals. Well, that was phenomenal. I mean, the fact that we can get that for the same credit as Puppy Pizza and a Bud Light. Unbelievable. Highly recommend Flight Pig, dining plane or not, it is a phenomenal eatery in Walt Disney World.
Regardless, when you're looking at quick service dining, you should always prioritize getting a meal that is $15 or more and a specialty beverage. If you are an adult, getting alcohol certainly does help boost the cost as well. But even if you're not gonna drink alcohol, a milkshake, a slushy, a specialty coffee, something more than just a found beverage or soda, definitely boosts the dollar value for your meal. And according to my math, some of the other quick service restaurants with a high average cost entree are the Yak and Yeti Quick Service Restaurant, Sutuli Canteen, Flame Tree Barbecue, and Regal Eagle. Now, you could also include Deluxe Burger in that conversation because they have high specialty beverages in their milkshakes. Columbia Harbor House also has some pretty high cost meals with that lobster roll. And then you have places like Casey's Corner where if you get their specialty hot dogs, they crest the $16 range. Basically, if you like meat, especially barbecue, you can get higher cost items classic theme park food like chicken tenders, puffy pizza, burgers, or non-meat items are going to be a lot less. Made it to our final destination of the day for our final feeding. We are headed inside Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. Ooh, the smells of the Polynesian are so, so good. The Polynesian Village Resort is home to one of the most iconic and legendary dining locations in all of Walt Disney World. And we will be having dinner, yes, you guessed it, friends, at Ohio. Hana. Table service entitlements include one entree, one dessert, and one beverage. Additionally, in the past, you were able to swap the dessert for an appetizer, and you're no longer able to do that. And like with the quick service meals, if you're on the adult dining plan, that beverage can be a specialty beverage, including alcohol. Note that several buffets, such as Cape May or Boma, as well as several all-you-care-to-enjoy meals, such as Ohana, do count as one table service entitlement, even though they're not a specific a la carte meal. By my calculations, you should be targeting 55 to 60 dollars in total for your table service meal in order to maximize the value you're getting from those meals per person per person yes other good options include character dining for lunch or dinner those meals are typically in the 60 dollar range that includes places like tusker house chef mickey's crystal palace garden grill oh yeah hollywood and vine yep other good non-character dining options include Homecoming, Teppanito, Viennapoli, Steakhouse 71, Boma Dinner, and another really good option for your table service credit is the Fantasmic Dining Package, excluding the Hollywood Brown Derby. With that, you are going to get dinner and a reserved spot for Fantasmic. The best option for this is Hollywood and Vine, which costs $75 per person. An important note when it comes to table service dinners is that some restaurants are considered signature dining. They're the more expensive meals, and those are two credits on the dining plan, two table service entitlements per person for that one meal. Signature restaurants include places like Gico, California Grill, Citrico's, Haleo, Brown Derby, Hoopty Doo over at Fort Wilderness, that's two as well. And also some of the character dining experiences such as any meal at Cinderella's Royal Table, lunch and dinner at Akershus in Norway, be our guest lunch and dinner, or storybook dining with Snow White. Now mathematically speaking, it is incredibly difficult to beat the dining plan with a signature meal because while the entrees at a signature dining experience might be double the cost of a standard table service dining meal, it's gonna be difficult to bridge that gap with drinks and desserts. Basically, the average cost of an entree at a non-signature, just regular table service restaurant is probably in the $25 to $30-ish range. Yeah. Your sig and your signature entrees are gonna be more in the $50 to $60 range. However, you're not getting another drink or another dessert, but you're still spending two credits. Hopefully that makes sense. Much like at your quick service dining, when you are at a table service restaurant that is not a buffet or has a prefix cost, like Ohana, then you're gonna to wanna to look for the most expensive item on the menu. And more often than not, that comes down to meat, more specifically, steak. As the granddaughter of an Iowa beef farmer, I love that. It often works out in my favor as someone who loves eating steak. But if you're someone that doesn't eat red meat, you're vegetarian or vegan, those items are gonna be a lower cost. So you really need to figure out if you can beat the dining plan or make it worth it. And ultimately that all comes down to the math. You're going to wanna look at the dining locations you want to eat at on your trip. Take a look at the cost of those entrees that you're most interested in and then set that against the cost and value of the dining plan to figure out if you really are maximizing the value of that plan. That's a lot of math talk. Yeah. Are you ready to eat nudes now? Can we do math there too? You can. Okay. Yeah. Please count how many plates of nudes I eat. On it. 
Ohana is an incredibly popular all you care to enjoy dining experience here at the Polynesian. Famous for its grilled meats, including steak and shrimp, its pot stickers, nudes, wings, and my ultimate favorite dessert in Walt Disney World, the bread pudding. Ohana is $62 per adult out of pocket, which is why it's such a good use of a dining plan credit because that doesn't even include tax or whatever tropical drink we might get. Uh, it also doesn't include gratuity, which remember you have to pay those extra on the dining plan. Now we've done a very in-depth item by item review of Ohana in the past. So we're gonna keep this a little bit shorter and sweet since this has been an overload of information and content already. Uh, so enjoy this lovely montage. Try not to drool. Tiki butt. Tiki butt. Well, I can barely move. If you don't leave Ohana with the meat sweats, did you even go to Ohana? No. What's your favorite part of Ohana? The steaks, the mm. wings. Mm. What about you? It's gotta be the nudes and the bread pudding. Oh, damn it. A classic. Carbs on carbs on carbs. A classic. A lot coming off of a day of eating, though. <laughs> You know what? Pro tip. Going from uh, Polite Pig to Ohana, mm -hmm. it's a lot of meat. Genius. But, oh. <laughs> it's a Ron Swanson day. It is. It's Ron Swanson style. That, that's his <laughs> preferred method of eating. Ooh. And pro tip, I didn't love the look of any of the specialty cocktails, especially because the Lapu Lapu, the pineapple drink, he said I could get it but not served in a pineapple, and that's just kind of sad. I asked him to just make me an old fashioned, but make it the most expensive I could and count it on the dining plan, and our server hooked it up. So if you want a basic cocktail, just ask for the best liquor you can get and still get the credit. Total cost for Ohana had we paid out of pocket, including our cocktails and tax, would have been $169.34, plus gratuity, tip your cast members. Which means we officially beat the dining plan. But at what cost? My pants are so tight. It hood hurts. And they're spandex, they're, they're leggings, and I'm, they're, I'm full. Mine are, mine are jeans. That was a mistake. I made a grave error. That was error. a rookie mistake. <laughs> a grave error. Now in total, we would have spent out of pocket $310.50 on all the meals that we have had today. Which means we beat the dining plan by about $121 or so. Even taking out the refillable mugs, which are arguably the least valuable portion of the dining plan, we still beat it today by about $80. So it, it can be done. And keep in mind, if your goal is to beat the dining plan each day of your stay, it would mean you'd have to eat similar to lead to this each day of your stay. And as you can see, it's a lot of food. But is the Disney Dining Plan worth it? That's the big question. It all comes down to math. Yes, it does, Dr. Strange. Also keep in mind, we didn't have any kind of promotion or deal with the dining plan, which they often run. They do free dining plans and different things like that. So obviously that would change the equation. But if you're planning your Disney trip and you want to do a lot of character dining, you're a big meat eater, you want to drink alcohol at several meals, yeah. it could be worth it for you. 
if you're not going to do a bunch of character dining, you're a lighter eater, you're vegan, you don't want to drink a lot during your vacation, then maybe the dining plan isn't the best choice for you. And I know I joke about it a lot, but it really does come down to the math. So what you literally need to do is pull up the restaurants that you're interested in going to, take a look at the meals that sound interesting or something you'd like to try, and do the math and compare it to the total cost of the dining plan for your stay. There are some people who like to book the dining plan because they're paying for it in advance and then it feels like you're not paying for anything when yeah. you're on vacation, which I fully understand that. That is Girl Math 101. Huh. But it may be better if, if that's your mindset, it may be better to be purchasing gift cards along the way or something like that if you do the math and realize that you're not actually saving money booking a dining plan. But if you are going to purchase and utilize the Disney dining plan, here are some of our best tips and tricks to use it well. Number one, be expensive. Order the higher cost items on the menus and look for those higher dollar value snacks. Generally speaking, you wanna spend about $60 per person at a table service restaurant, $25 per person at a quick service restaurant, including that drink, and six, seven plus dollars on snacks. Anything else, water bottles, popcorn refills, you need to be paying for those out of pocket. Split your quick service restaurant meals. That not only gives you the opportunity to try different and new items, but it also splits up those meals so you're able to eat more. Check the app when you're mobile ordering. Make sure that your dipping sauce or your water bottle yeah. is not being counted as a yes. snack and that you're paying for that out of pocket. Do not let the system charge a $1 cheese sauce as a snack, I beg of you. And you should always prioritize getting specialty drinks and alcohol when at those meals because that's gonna help you get the most value and bang for your buck. And most importantly, do some math. math. Just do the math. math. Math is fun, everyone. Well, when it involves noodles, it does. Yeah, noodle math. Well, friends, that brings us to an end of us trying to beat the Disney dining plan, which you did successfully. Cheers, cheers, clapping, cheers. Oh my gosh, thank you. So Thank you. It was really hard eating all that delicious food. I have indigestion. It's fine. Tums. 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 Ta -dum -dum -dum. This is why you're in your 30s. Carry Tums, friends. Yeah. That's our bonus pro tip for the dining plan. Carry Tums. Pepto-Bismol if you don't want to have a tablet. You can do a tablet Pepto-Bismol. That is true. That is true. Carry antacids. That's our dining plan pro tip. Let us know your dining plan pro tip <laughs> down in the comments. Until next time, friends, be sure to like this video. Subscribe if you are new. Follow us on all of our socials. And if you want to join the Mam Fam in the conversation, please be sure to join us on Discord. The links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been very delicious and magical. It has been. Oh my gosh, I'm so full. <laughs> do you want something sweet, a little snacky? Can I have like a coffee? Oh, we should do a coffee. We need a coffee. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. An aperitif. <laughs> Bye. Bye.